in 79 AD, Mount Vesuvius erupted with terrifying force, obliterating the thriving Roman city of Pompeii and freezing its people in time beneath a blanket of volcanic ash. This event not only shaped the fate of thousands, but also created an archaeological legacy that has captivated the world for centuries. Although Vesuvius's eruption claimed lives in an instant, the volcanic ash preserved Pompeii's citizens in haunting detail and left behind plaster casts and remains that have provided a direct peek into ancient life. However, modern science is now revealing that many of our long-held assumptions about these victims may be misguided. A recent DNA study conducted by a team of American and Italian researchers suggests that past interpretations of Pompeii's victims could be fundamentally flawed. Scholars estimate that at least 2,000 people perished in Pompeii alone, with the volcanic ash preserving their final moments in a macabre snapshot of disaster. Archaeological work began in earnest in the 18th century, and over time, the site revealed an unparalleled record of Roman life. In the 19th century, Italian archaeologist Giuseppe Fiorelli devised an innovative method to preserve the victims' forms. By pouring plaster into the voids left in the ash layer by decomposed bodies, he was able to create casts of the individuals in their final positions. These casts became iconic representations of Pompeii's tragedy and captured the fear and anguish etched on the faces of the dead. They also provided a foundation for many assumptions about the relationships and roles of the people caught in Vesuvius's grip. For decades, archaeologists and historians have studied Pompeii's plaster casts and drawn conclusions based on the appearance and positioning of the figures. If a figure was found with a child, for example, it was often assumed to be a mother. The assumption that certain individuals must be family members, parents and children or siblings, was rarely questioned, and early scholars frequently projected gender roles and familial structures onto the victims based on Victorian ideals of family life. However, in recent years, advances in genetics and forensic archaeology have allowed researchers to go beyond these surface-level assumptions. The recent study involved extracting DNA from bone fragments found in the plaster casts. This genetic analysis allowed the researchers to determine relationships and, in some cases, the sex of the individuals with far greater accuracy than previously possible. DNA degrades over time, and the intense heat from the volcanic material further complicates extraction. However, through advanced genetic techniques, researchers managed to obtain sufficient DNA to draw new conclusions. One of the most intriguing discoveries came from a site known as the House of the Golden Bracelet. In 1974, archaeologists uncovered the remains of four individuals in this opulent residence. Among them was a figure holding a child on their lap. Based on this positioning, researchers assumed the figure was a mother. However, the new DNA analysis has revealed that the mother was actually a male with dark skin and black hair, likely of North African descent. This man was not biologically related to the two children, both of whom were identified as male. The other adult, once thought to be the father, might also have been male, therefore challenging assumptions of a traditional nuclear family. In another part of the city, the house of the Cryptoporticus contained two casts preserved in a close embrace, which previous archaeologists speculated could represent a mother and daughter, two sisters, or even lovers. The DNA analysis has now shown that one of these individuals was male and that they were not related through the maternal line, ruling out the possibility of them being immediate family members. This raises intriguing questions about the nature of their relationship. The implications of these findings are profound. The discovery that the supposed nuclear family was, in fact, a group of unrelated men opens up new interpretations of Pompeii's social structure and daily life. Some historians now suggest that these individuals may have been workers or servants residing in the same household, or perhaps friends and neighbours who sought refuge together during the eruption. Others speculate that Pompeii was home to a diverse population that did not conform to the strict family norms commonly assumed by previous generations of archaeologists. The discovery of individuals with North African and Eastern Mediterranean ancestry highlights the cultural diversity of Pompeii, 
a characteristic often overlooked in traditional Roman history. The Roman Empire was a vast and interconnected realm, stretching from Britain to the Middle East and North Africa, with people from different regions interacting through trade, warfare and migration. As the city grew, so did its population of enslaved individuals, freed slaves and immigrants, all of whom contributed to the multicultural environment of Pompeii. The genetic findings also shed light on the emotional dynamics of Pompeii's last hours. The researchers speculate that the terror of the eruption may have driven strangers together, leading to the forging of bonds in a desperate bid for survival. Historical records from other disasters indicate that people often seek out companionship in their final moments, sometimes even embracing strangers as a final act of solidarity. The cast of one man holding a young boy may have represented a fleeting moment of compassion and protection rather than a familial bond. The misinterpretations uncovered by the DNA study illustrate how modern perspectives can shape historical narratives. In the case of Pompeii, the researchers suggest that past archaeologists may have unintentionally projected contemporary beliefs about gender roles, family and social structure onto the ancient victims. For instance, the Victorian-era archaeologists who first studied Pompeii's remains likely saw family structures through a 19th-century lens, which emphasised nuclear families and distinct gender roles. These biases, in turn, influenced how the victims were identified and understood. The DNA research at Pompeii is just beginning. Scientists are continuing to examine both the plaster casts and skeletal remains, and hope to uncover more about the city's demographics, health and even lifestyle. Ongoing research may reveal further complexities in the social fabric of Pompeii and provide an even richer understanding of how the residents lived, worked and related to one another. This study also highlights the limitations of archaeology and how our interpretations of history can evolve with new technology. The plaster casts, once seen as static relics, are now recognised as dynamic sources of information capable of transforming our understanding of ancient life. Future studies could even overturn recent findings as DNA analysis becomes more precise and comprehensive. Thank you for joining us on this fascinating journey into the hidden lives of Pompeii's residents. The story of Pompeii continues to evolve as new technology and discoveries allow us to uncover even more about the lives, relationships and diversity of this ancient Roman city. If you enjoyed this exploration, be sure to subscribe so you won't miss future deep dives into history's most captivating mysteries. Stay with us as we bring you more stories from the past, updated with the latest findings and insights. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.